And if you're on treatment and you have no virus in your bloodstream, that your disease is essentially put into remission and you cannot pass the virus along to others. Uh, properly treated, people who are living with HIV can now expect to live uh, life expectancies almost up to uh, expectancies of those who are not living with HIV. Uh, and this has been one of the sort of signal medical accomplishments in the last 30 years. However, uh, what about the effect of cannabis on NHIV? The medications that we have now, antiretroviral therapies, are very complex pharmaceutical molecules which interfere uh, with how the virus replicates in the bloodstream. Uh, however, we have some new research to suggest that cannabis may also play a role uh, in affecting the immune system and affecting the virus itself. This was an experiment done by colleagues uh, down in Louisiana. And what they did was they took 16 monkeys and they randomly started eight monkeys on daily injections of THC and the other eight monkeys on placebo. So this is a standard way uh, of looking at the possible effect of a drug uh, on an organism or a system. Then they, what they did is they took the 16 monkeys and they, uh, they, they uh, infected them with SIV, simian immunodeficiency virus. This is a very close relative of HIV. HIV, of course, came from monkeys originally. Uh, and SIV and these sorts of monkeys, resist attacks, are commonly used in the research world to try and figure out how HIV works. What happened? Well, Patricia Molina, the scientist who did the study, said to me, she said, look, we expected those, people, those monkeys that we had put on to, a, to a THC to do worse than the monkeys that were not on THC. She's previously studied the effects of alcohol and other sorts of psychoactive drugs. And in all cases, the monkeys that were on the drugs did worse than the monkeys who were on. What happened? The monkeys on THC had less virus in their blood. The monkeys in, on THC had less inflammatory response to HIV, which is an important point I'll get to in a second. The monkeys also had much longer survival. The monkeys typically die after a year after being infected with SIV. These monkeys survived for two years, and in fact, they were still living when they had when they were uh, killed and necrosis um, to assess the disease state. So this was shocking research. Well, Patricia said to me, she's like, she never expected to see uh, this effect of THC on monkeys. So monkeys are great, uh, but of course we're interested in humans uh, and the effect of humans on HIV, uh, HIV on humans. So what we did up here in Vancouver is we said, well, can we replicate Patricia's study uh, with monkeys up here in humans? Uh, obviously, we can't experiment on humans in the sense the same way that they did on monkeys. So what we did is we looked at some of the research that we've already done among people living with HIV to see if we could see the same sort of thing happen. I run a study of over a thousand people living in the downtown East side who are living with HIV, and for a small proportion of these individuals, 88 of them, we have records on them from both before and after they were infected with HIV. So what we did is we pulled their medical records. Uh, and we, can, we compared the ones that reported that they were smoking marijuana at least daily to the ones who report they were smoking less often or not at all. What did we find? Just like in the monkey study, we found that the ones who were smoking marijuana daily during the period of their infection had much lower viral loads. Uh, like Patricia, I was uh, stunned when I, when I you know, ran the numbers to find the result. Uh, it was certainly not anything that we expected to see. In our, in our patient population. They had uh, a lower uh, level of HIV, and this is, you know, for the scientists in the room, or for those of you who have had to slog through medical research, you know, the first thing you should say, well, MJ, this is an observational study, this is an experimental study, so maybe something else is going on, maybe it's not the THC, maybe it's some other condition associated with THC. We did do a statistical model, and we still found that those individuals who were smoking marijuana at least every day had lower viral loads compared to those. So who cares? Uh, we are fortunate that over the last 30 years, uh, we have developed very good uh, uh, treatments for HIV that have uh, saved or extended the lives of millions of people around the world. Marijuana will not replace these drugs anytime soon, uh, nor do I think uh, any of us would want to uh, uh, move back to the era in which we did not have good treatments for HIV. What is exciting about this research, though, to my mind, is, what it, is the glimpse it might give us of the possible role of cannabinoids on viral infections themselves. We think what's happening here is it's not a THC-driven pathway, it's a CBD-driven pathway through the CB2 pathway uh, in, in, the, in the human body. 
which as you know is primarily expressed on disease on, on cells within the intestinal system. This is important because HIV, we're increasingly realizing, is a disease of the intestinal system. So we're thinking that maybe what is happening is that the CBD is modulating the immune response, maybe in fact it's killing off the HIV itself, but either way, this is a very exciting insight uh, to the possible role that cannabinoids might play in viral infections. It's important, of course, to understand that one of the ways, the primary ways that viruses hurt us is not through the virus itself, but through the body's reaction to the virus, the inflammation that our bodies mount as a response to the virus. And what we're seeing here possibly is that THC and CBD may have a role in modulating that response, and so they may play a role uh, moving forward uh, in helping us to suffer less from viruses and from the inflammation of the body. So this is exciting research, I think. Uh, it is research that we hope to move forward in the next number of years. We are fortunate at UBC that our research uh, has uh, attracted a gift from NG Biomed who are um, uh, seeking to become licensed producers of medical cannabis. So I'm hoping that as this conference moves forward in the years uh, ahead, I'll be able to come back to you and show just the, the kind of research that we've done uh, and the evidence base that we've been able to build uh, around cannabinoids, HIV, and other Thank you very much.